Okay. I think people can see we've got 15 minutes. So this is a tight timeline. Um, all right. Let's jump into it. So hi, everyone. My name is Vince Safani. I'm the founder and CEO of Joyride. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some untapped opportunities in shared mobility and what we're seeing in the market. So hopefully there's some aspiring operators out there or some existing operators who are managing a fleet and can hopefully take some information here today. Um, okay, so untapped opportunities. So you may have seen this already, but uh, and, and I know a lot of people are talking about this, but McKinsey is saying that Micromobility market is a $90 billion market opportunity by 2030. Um, and that the opportunity right now is tremendous. And so there's a lot of space still um, in micromobility, even though there's, you know, everything go that's going on with the economy right now, slow down in institutional investment. There's still a lot of cities who can use micromobility, um, micromobility solutions in their city. And so, uh, we believe we're a strong proponent of micromobility, obviously, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, but there's some, what we believe are some real untapped opportunities. So a little bit about Joyride, if you don't know, just to kind of explain why I'm even talking about this. Joyride is a micromobility platform. We help entrepreneurs all over the world launch their own fleet of bikes, scooters, mopeds, uh, whatever it is, kick scooters, e-bikes, you name it. Um, in the micromobility space. We have customers in over 200 different markets, over 35 different countries, over a dozen different languages, uh, lots of different, different business models as well. Um, and yeah, uh, and then we provide everything on the software side. So the app, the back end, all the um, ID verification, if you need it for your riders, fleet management for your vehicles, we do things like vehicle financing, et cetera. But anyways, that's not why you're here. Um, you want to know about the untapped opportunities. So let's get into it. <clears throat> so the first one that we're seeing is in-app ads. So uh, a lot of operators are leveraging, not enough, are leveraging their mobile app to partner with retail and different businesses in their community to promote them in banners, pre-ride screens. You can do things like custom map icons. Um, you can create promotions with different partners in the space, like literally in your community, um, offering different discounts, uh, advertising different events that are going on within the city during different times. And depending on how sophisticated the software is, you can do things like uh, create geofences. So as a rider goes into a zone, then they're introduced to a promo. So maybe they're not getting a promo to like, a coffee shop if they're nowhere near it but once they actually are within like a kilometer or half a kilometer of that coffee shop they actually get an ad for it uh, giving them like 25 percent off um this is one of our customers here mover they use advertising on the vehicle which is pretty traditional um, but then also in the app as well and so 25 percent of the revenue comes from advertising um, one of their last campaigns generated over $130,000 in additional revenue. So the opportunity here is pretty tremendous. $130,000 could pay for a whole new fleet. So um, the second untapped opportunity is franchising. This is a great way for smaller operators to reduce your startup costs. You can work with a brand that's already out there in the market. You get uh, connected with a really good network of uh, support from different franchisees, other partners in the space. There's other opportunities um, likely for financing, insurance, uh, for city permits. We've seen this with our customers. You've seen it. You may have heard about it with like uh, the bird uh, franchise model that they've done in the past. So this is like a really easy way to get started in the space as a new operator um, without having to spend as much capital. This is also another way, if you wanted to do this on your own as well and start franchising your brand, also a way for you to do this as well and launch other operators across, uh, across a different geography. One of our customers, Goat, has been doing this for a long time, 
been very successful at it. Um, they're across a lot of cities all around the United States. So if you want to launch a goat franchise, I would definitely recommend reaching out to them. <clears throat> Another untapped opportunity um, is private fleets. So this could be really lucrative for you if you're just starting out or you want to expand the business. Everyone's like very familiar with public fleets, right? Like public shared rental, you've seen it out there, bird and line, but a lot of our customers are very successful in the private market where they're just working with hotels, residences, apartment buildings, campuses, um, developers to launch their system that only those customers actually get access to. So the, the uh, regular public can't actually rent those vehicles. What this allows them to do is it allows them to package everything together as one full service. So it's the vehicles, it's the stations, it's all the maintenance as an annual or monthly cost for them. So now they're generating really predictable long-term because a lot of these contracts are long-term as well long-term and recurring revenue for their business. And because the users or the riders of these vehicles are a little bit more predictable and they're going from point A back to point A, they're typically going to require less maintenance on the vehicle. So the operating costs are smaller as well. And it's easy for our customers to kind of package everything together. And what we're seeing is really around the world, developers um, in a lot of buildings want this as an amenity to remain competitive for their customers or for their residents. So it's a great way to run this kind of business. And on the higher end, like if you launch 25 vehicles, 25 scooters, 25 bikes, if you can think, if you believe that you can generate $18 per revenue per day off one of these vehicles, which could be a rental in itself. So one rental a day, which isn't out of the question, you can make $162,000 a year just off those 25 vehicles. Um, so it's, it's really a great opportunity. A lot of our customers actually don't like promoting themselves because they don't want other operators to know how great of a market it is and they don't want competition. So, uh, a lot of them try and fly under the radar here. <clears throat> so that's kind of the third one. The fourth um, untapped opportunity that we're seeing that's growing is not micro mobility, but it's mini mobility. And so earlier I mentioned McKinsey said micro mobility markets a $90 billion market. Well, what they're calling the mini mobility market, they're saying that this is a hundred billion dollar market by 2030. So even bigger than micro mobility itself. So micro mobility are these four wheeled electric vehicles that weigh less than your typical car. Um, they are more convenient, more comfortable for customers because they have doors, they can have air conditioning. Um, so they're protected from the weather. They also have a lot more storage space as well, or they actually have storage space. Um, it's great for tourists. Another benefit to these vehicles are they're generally licensed and regulated already. So a lot of our customers have the problem of they want to launch scooters, but they have to get like a special permit to have these kinds of scooters or, or bikes like dockless scooters or dockless e-bikes or something like that, where cars are generally already regulated in a city. And because of that, there's a lot more financing and, and insurance options available to you. Um, because insurance companies already know how to price these kinds of products. Same thing with financing. <clears throat> and so typically where you might get caught up trying to finance 200 scooters or get insurance for 200 scooters and you're not going to, it's going to be super expensive and unpredictable. This will have a lot more partners in the space, be a lot more competitive on pricing. <clears throat> um, and depending on this, depending on the city, talking to the OEMs and operators, you can rent these vehicles for 180 bucks to 450 bucks per day. So obviously they cost a lot more, but most operators aren't actually buying these outright anyways, they're financing them through the OEM itself. And so it's a great way to 
uh, preserve cash flow. Because the vehicles are so big too, there's a lot more advertising options as you can see on this from one of our customers here, it's a gem product. Um, you can advertise all over the doors, advertise on the top, um, start another way to just generate additional revenue. Um, the business models here are shuttles. So you can launch like your own shuttle service in a tourist area, or this can be just entirely rented out. So someone could just drive it themselves. So you could have two, four, six people, um, depending on the size of the vehicle. You can, uh, depending on who you partner with here, you can do revenue share. That's also something I forgot to mention on the private share model too. So you can also do revenue share with wherever you're deploying those vehicles. And so it's another incentive or sweetener to get these vehicles out there in the market, maybe a private space. And because they're electric, they're generally all environmentally friendly. Okay, so those were the four untapped opportunities. I have a couple minutes here. Just going to, if I can, promote the Joyride Academy. This is our space where if you want to launch, scale, grow the business, learn about how to market a micromobility business, learn how to find investors for micromobility. We've got a ton of courses on there, all for free. Please check it out if you want. Um, lots of helpful stuff. And yeah, the micromobility folks have been great in helping us promote that and getting some videos out there too. So lots of really good content. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna stop sharing because I can't see anything. And if people have questions, I'd be happy to take some. Okay. Lots of chatting in here. I don't know. <laughs> what are some of the mobili mini mobility OEMs? Yeah, great. Polaris. Um, yeah, Club Car. Um, Polaris sold the gem brand to Wave. So check out WAVE, W-A-E-V. Do we have partners and clients in the EU? Yes, we do, uh, depending on what kind of partners you mean, but we actually, um, a lot of our customers are in the EU. Hey, hey Vince. you're not Nathan Bell. I'm not Nathan Bell, I'm also muted. Okay. Wait. Is Luke coming back? Am I getting kicked out? Is that what that means? Tuck Tucks, great. Yeah, Tuck Tucks are a great option too. We have a Tuck Tuck partner in. Hey. Hey. Stay as long as you want. I'm just here to uh, to say hey and thanks so much for being here, Vince. I, I missed you on the intro, but um, you're not getting booted at all. That was an awesome presentation. I just wanted okay. to say hey and say thank you for being here and say these are great questions coming into the chat. So I hope you stay and take as many as you have time for. Yeah, I'll take as many as there are. Thanks for having me, as always, Luke. Appreciate it. So yeah, I'll stick around. I know there's a ton of other stuff going on, so don't feel bad if you want to leave. Go ahead, but I'll stick around if people have more questions. I'm just trying to read them all. Awesome. Okay, uh, I see your screen. Yeah. Do you have systems that are just stations, like charging stations? So we have a lot of charging station and station partners. So if you want a station that charges... We have that. We have a we have partners that do that. If you want a station that just looks really nice, um, doesn't charge or kind of lock the vehicles, we have that too. If you want some that charge and lock, we have that. We work with like we work with partners all over the space. So yeah, just let us know what you want. Uh, my email is Vince at Joyride.city, by the way. So if people want to reach out to me there, how do you see the expansion of this market into the public sector? Um, I'm assuming that's kind of like micro mobility as a whole. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Some of our customers, actually one of our very first customers was working just in the public sector. That was a while ago. That was like, oh God, I'm not even going to say that was very long ago, but they were working with universities. So I guess if you want to consider universities as like the public sector, um, and they're deploying vehicles for the staff. So they were going around to different campuses and the staff of those campuses would get e-bikes as like a benefit and they would get their own kind of personal e-bike. So, 
and uh, they would get it for like a loan for like a month or a couple months, something like that. So it was an interesting business model. Can you talk about cargo e-bikes? Uh, yeah, good question. We have a couple customers who exclusively do cargo e-bikes. Some of them even make their own cargo e-bikes. Um, awesome business model. They're expanding into the delivery space as well because it's a really good solution for delivery. Um, I got to ride one of them uh, when we went to go visit them in Europe over the summer. Fantastic product. Um, I would recommend if you're thinking about cargo bikes, definitely an untapped market and many more operators should be doing this all around the world. How much integration can you enable through the app to the vehicle? Does it require a custom controller? Yes, good question here. So it does generally, um, but we have people on our team that can help you with that. So I don't know if you're building your own vehicle, David. Um, if you are, we can help you uh, get in contact with people who um, can help you with the controller and help you with the IoT. And then we can handle the integration on our side. I'm not sure how far along you are, kind of what the context is, but we're happy to help and have that conversation. Do you have clients in Eastern Europe? Yes. Um, are there any differences that you can point out in terms of daily operations? Hmm. Good question. I think like what we're seeing is each geography has like everything around payments is super unique in each market. I'm always learning about like a country that does. Uh, oh, I got, a D, I, sorry. I'm getting like notifications here <laughs> in this hopping thing. Um, each market does something different on the payment side. And so typically um, all the differences in like operations, what we've seen are just really around how people handle payments, whether it's like a debit card or a credit card, or you have to like top up your wallet or uh, pre-authorization on the card. So those are kind of like the biggest differences. I wouldn't say specifically like anything in terms of operations. Uh, do you think people will buy them just to use for community? Like micro mobility or mini mobility? Um, both. I want all of them. So yes, <laughs> yes to both. I would love my own personal gem, um, which I actually may ha get soon. So I'll keep you guys posted. Um, Spirit for you makes great cargo e-bikes. Never heard of them. Uh, very cool. This looks great. Oh, very unique. I love that. Are there last mile delivery use cases that run on your platform? Yeah, uh, we have several. Um, uh, we're about to get one going in Asia right now. Uh, we have, and then we have some in Europe, but really it's just about like the use cases are our operators who have maybe an excess in vehicles want to provide them for last mile delivery services. And then they use, the drivers can use our app to lock the vehicles remotely and unlock them. So that's kind of like the best use case. Um, but then there's other things too that you can track, like uh, because you're tracking the fleet, you can uh, manage the battery life, et cetera. And so um, there's lots of things that you can do depending on kind of the use case. How do we access these presentations? I can, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I'll send my presentation to Luke and then hopefully he can get it out to everyone if people want it. But like I said, my email is been sat in joyride dot city. I'll just put it in the chat here. If you want to reach out to me, um, happy to chat anytime. Good primer, the topic of this workshop. How do you integrate your ride sharing software with micro mobility? manufacturers. Thanks, Janet. <laughs> um, yeah, good question. So we work really closely with the 
the OEMs and uh, we have partners on the IoT space. And so it's just about making sure that IoT gets integrated with that vehicle, with that custom controller on the vehicle. Um, it's a bit of engineering work. And then it's just about working with the OEMs to making sure that we're able to um, expose kind of any data that we want the operator to see. So things like battery life, battery temperature, you know, geolocation, et cetera. We kind of pull that data or accelerometer data, sorry, not geolocation it comes from the IoT. I'm in California. What about insurance? Yeah, insurance is uh, insurance is always like a, a fun topic. I believe we have we have a course on the academy around insurance. Uh, we do have partners in the insurance space, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for. I would say reach out to us. Each market is different. I know the U.S. is specifically challenging. Um, so I would say reach out to us, kind of tell us about like what you're looking for, like how big the fleet is or how many vehicles you have, uh, what you, what the business model is, what else do we need? Some additional information that we have that we'll need to, but we have uh, people on our team that can help. Not saying that we can get you insurance, but we have partners in the space in the United States and in Europe who help with insurance. Well, thanks everyone. There's other presentations going on, by the way. So you don't have to stick around here. Um, you provide a recording or detailed data from the controller for diagnostic, like a past two weeks of use I can access from hub. Uh, maybe, uh, Yeah, James, I don't know, maybe email me and then let's have a chat. I, I don't fully understand what you're, what you're looking for, but might be able to help you. Um, uh, In-app advertising, that's native in our, in our product. Um, we didn't, we didn't partner with an ad tech company, uh, but we do partner with lots of different companies in the space. So if you think there's like an ad tech platform that you think we should be leveraging, happy to take a look at that and add them as a plugin on our product. We do it all the time and we have them for lots of different services for our operators. But all the features that I talked about today are native in our product. Thank you, Elad. Thanks, Elizabeth. Do you think operators can be profitable? Uh, yes, absolutely. I, there are over 10,000 markets. Uh, we th I, I think micromobility can be profitable and th it's not necessarily about population. It's more kind of about population density. And so we've seen, like I've seen Lyme in cities with 30,000 people. I think we have customers who have uh, uh, a fleet in like, a town of like 15 or 20,000. It's not necessarily about the population. It's about population density. It's about the business model. It's about what you're building the business model for, right? So it could be a tourist location with a very sparse population, but it's a tourist location that gets really high paying visitors who are going to pay a lot of money to rent the vehicles for a day. It's like I said, you can have 25 bikes theoretically at a hotel. And if each one is getting rented, then you can make $162,000, right? You can make, you can generate over $150,000 in revenue from the 25 bikes. So again, it's about the business model. So don't think about just like population as the driver here. It's really about population, population density. It's the main driver. If it's like a public, if you, if it's like your traditional public fleet, but we have lots of examples of operators who are profitable in smaller towns than 100,000. <clears throat> a good question.
All right, if that's kind of it from everyone, I'll just assume the, you know, maybe we'll kind of wrap up here. I'll send my presentation over to Luke. I don't know how he's gonna share it out or how it gets out to everyone, but he'll know more than me. Um, okay, question. Yeah, Tim, I would say fill out a, we have like a contact form on our website. Um, happy to pass that information along as well uh, to our, someone on our team who can help you. That's a good question. Let me just screenshot this. And we can reach out to what's happening in Arkansas. Expecting to change the insurance. I hope so. I am hopeful. A oh, nice link to Jared. Um, I hope there's insurance changes in the future. Um, I mean, the, the biggest issue, right, is kind of like the lack of historical data. And so as time goes on, insurance companies are going to be able to price it better. And so that's what we're mainly waiting for is just that historical data, I think. And I think there's like also just uh, uh, the human adverse reaction to like hearing about someone get into like a scooter accident, like that kind of visceral response of being like, oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. Versus like car accidents, we hear about them over the, all the time and we don't even think about anything. Like we don't, don't even blink. Jared with the, the link in the chat thank you who should i contact for my tech question james flip it over to me i'll see, <laughs> i'll try to answer it if you could just send me more details than than what you had in the chat i'll see if i can help if not i'll point you to someone who can help just give me some, give me some like more information about what you're trying to achieve. I would say. Um, I put it in the chat here, but it's just Vince at joyride.city. Is this what it feels like to be like a Twitch streamer? I'm just like talking to myself, reading the chat. I'm often famous. <laughs> okay. I don't, yeah. You know what? People don't have to stick around. If you have a question, you know, let me know. Okay. Maybe we'll wrap it up here. Look, I appreciate uh, everyone's time. Thanks for sticking around. And thanks for asking questions and participating. Uh, feel free to check out our academy. Let me just type out that link, academy.jorad. We've got a bunch of courses there, um, all free. So if you want to learn more about the industry, uh, please check that out. And yeah. All right. See everyone else in the other sessions.